Hello everyone, Reza here. Welcome to another how-to video. In this one, I respond to one of my Patreon members, a 3D DLW, who asked how to generate smoke or dust from a texture. Now, this topic is something that I partially addressed in my fire tutorial a while ago, but I thought I'd make a quick video on that and demonstrate the techniques to achieve such effect. So let's get started. Okay, I'm gonna start with the brand new scene. You can just uh, create a new scene and follow along. In order to create a dust or particles from an image, you need to make sure that this image is a black and white. Now I've got my watermark logo on my YouTube channel and I thought I would just use this one as an example um, obviously you can go to Photoshop type in your name or any logo or name of the project you have just make sure that the area that you would like to emit particle from is white and the area you don't want to have any simulation turn that to black now, with that in mind, let's, uh, let's start with the whole process. I'm going to make sure that I am in Effects menu set. I'm going to go to Fluid, 3D Fluid Container and go to the Option box. I'm going to reset its settings. And obviously, as usual, I'm sure if you have been following my effects tutorials, you know that I tend not to use a native emitter on my fluid container. So I'm going to turn it off. Everything else I can set to default and go apply. Now I have a an empty container sitting at the center of my scene, nothing too complicated. Then I'm going to select a polyplane. This polyplane is a bit small. Um, I'm going to scale it up a little and just make sure that this fluid should encompass the geometry inside it. So. What do I mean? If you do something like that, then half of your geometry won't get any emission. Now, that's uh, that's a good starting point. Next is to either lower this or bring up the container itself. I'm going to hide the grid so it really doesn't matter. And now what you want is this geometry to act as your emitter. First things first, I'm going to name it properly. So it's going to be our emitter and is a geometry. So emitter underscore geo. You can name your fluid if you want. But now to connect the two, you select the container, shift select your emitter, you go to fluids, you go to add edit content, emit from object. If I go to the option box, there is nothing in there. Dust emitter actually is the name that uh, I think is going to work for us and you want their type to be as surface. We go apply and close and you can see it is connected. The warning I'm getting is about cache playback. It says that, you know, it needs to be cached in order to be played. So nothing too serious. I'm going to go to the option box. I'm in fluid shape node. And one thing I want to do before I even start, I want to up res it to something like 40. That should do the trick. You can see the patch is not updated automatically. You always need to rewind and it gets updated now. We have enough resolution. Now, if I play, you can see that the emission is now there and fluid gets generated from the photo. I'm going to give myself something like 400 frames that should do the trick. Now, uh, a common mistake I see students make is they assign the texture to this image and they expect the fluid to kind of detect all the dark areas and bright areas and respect the emission map. The texture needs to be applied on the emitter itself. So if I select the emitter, go in here into basic emitter attribute. I have a rate set to 100. I'm going to just bump it up to 200. 
And if I scroll down, we have fluid attribute and we have density emission map. That's where you need to plug your map. So I'm going to go quickly into the checkerboard file, select that watermark. You can even set the filter type to off and I'm going to call this watermark underscore CLR for color. And if I play, now I'm getting the emission from the logo itself. I can probably select the logo and press H to hide it. And you can see it's working. Now, obviously, the result looks a bit silly. So let's spend a few minutes and just tweak the whole result. So we get something pleasing. I'm going to start with um, the emitter itself. I want the emitter to emit something, but then I want it to turn off and this dust gets disappeared. So I'm going to focus on the emitter for now. I'm going to select the emitter, scroll up and trying to find exactly when would be the good time for the emitter to be turned off. Maybe until frame 100, I want the emission to be on. So in here, I'm going to go and set a key. So from frame 0 to frame 100, we have the emission rate of 200. But from 100 to 150, maybe, I want this to be off. And I explained that into another how-to video. So if you're not quite sure what I just did, make sure to watch that video. So now if I play after frame 150, we'll have no emission. Next is to go into density voxel per second. And I'm going to kind of increase the amount of emission per second to get a thicker result. This allows me to kind of play around with um, the effects some more without losing quality. Now, one thing that bothers me is this soft fall off, which comes from fluid drop off. So I'm going to drop this down quite a fair bit to something like 0 0.05 to get a better result. Now, if I play, you can see everything is very well pronounced. Now, I think for um, my emitter itself, that gets the job done. Let's focus on the fluid shape node. I'm going to bump up the resolution to something like 100 and maybe 20. And then I do not want to have any boundaries for X and Z. So X and Z, I want to open the boundaries. And every time you open boundaries, if you're using auto resize, which I'm about to do, you make sure to turn off resize close boundaries that constrain these two sides. That should do the trick in content method. We just want to use density and velocity, so I'm not going to use that. In display, I want to set the boundary draw to bounding box so I kind of see what's going on in the at the bottom of my container. What else? So dynamic simulation, maybe just a touch of damp. So 0 0.001 is what I want to use. I also want to give myself a slight touch of margin so you can see how this fluid or dust gets really close to the borders. I want to give myself margin, maybe one unit. Now I don't want to do any self attraction. I go to content details. We have no turbulence, temperature or fuel. I go straight into density. And one attribute I would like to tweak is dissipation. At the moment, 
I zeroed out the dissipation, I can actually go to frame 200 and keyframe a dissipation and go to frame 150 or 250 and set the dissipation to something really high like 10 to intensify the process. So within two seconds, our dust disappears. And this is something that probably we want. Um, the emission I want to be off, the dissipation I want to kick in, so we get that nice fading out effect. Now let's see what we're getting. If I go and look at the simulation from the top, probably going to zoom in just a tad and play. Now, as you can see, you probably have noticed that it really stays like that. So there is nothing entertaining about this. Yes, the fluid is very well controlled, but there is no interactivity. There is no turbulence. Exactly. That's exactly what we need. Before I add turbulence, I'm going to go to velocity and add a little bit of swirl in there. And when I apply turbulence, this swirl plays a huge role in moving the fluid around. Adding turbulence is fairly simple. With the container selected, I'm going to go to Field and Solver and use Turbulence. I'm not going to name it. Maya is going to name it Turbulence, which is good enough. Um, everything is set to default. I'm just going to go Create. Let's play. Now, one thing I dislike is it's taking effect way too early. At least for the first 24 or 25 frames, I want this to have no impact. And after that, I want that to kick in with much higher intensity than five units. So let's go to frame 25 or maybe 30, it doesn't matter. And I'm going to completely turn it off and keyframe it. And let's go to frame 50 and let's crank it up quite high actually. I don't know, 75, 80 maybe. Let's see how we go. Set a key and let's play. Now the first 25 frame, it's stable. And all of a sudden, the turbulence kicks in and move things around. Now you can see auto resize is taking in and we've got enough resolution to have that pocket holes. Fantastic. Of course, you can spend the time and really tweak this the way that you like. But I think for the purpose of this video, this should do the trick. I'm going to cache this and cache and Maya fluid. And then I'm going to go create. Now the scene is being cached, I can even select the fluid itself, fluid container itself, go up into display and under bounding draw, I can just turn the visibility off. Now you can see I can actually go and scroll and see the effect taking place. Very, very cool. Probably uh, 400 frames was um, just too much. I can go with 250 frames, I believe. Yes, it's exactly right. Now there are so many things you guys can do at this stage. You can go into a very important rollout we didn't talk about, which is shading and play around with the opacity. You can go in here into color and start giving this color. So you can set this one to density and give yourself some colors here. So for example, this color, and again, these type of effects, you can definitely do that in post as well, but you can kind of find some really cool, interesting results with that if you want, and just have fun. You can go into opacity, another very, very useful rollout and really get artistic with these type of effects. 
uh, you can also go into lighting and enable self shadow and have a little bit of self shadow in here and have self shadow so you can get something like this right so the look of the whole thing is totally up to you I'm just going to play blast it because we haven't had a chance to look at the pace itself I'm going to play blast it we're gonna come back really quick and have a look at the play blast and probably even render it and that will do the job for this tutorial so I'll be back really quick Now I did a quick render and that's how it turned out. Of course you can kind of bring your own flavor into it, go into shading and play around with colors and with opacity and get a much better looking result, something that you really like. I hope you find this video useful and use it in your projects. Until the next how-to video, see you guys later.